Aurora Fest here on Fox Weather at Night. This is a picture that we just had sent in to us via the QR code that you see on your screen. Thanks a lot, Tina Peterson. That's Urbandale, Iowa. Goodness, that is something else, isn't it? Wow. You got the pinks, you've got the reds, you got the purples, you got some greens in there too. Here's another one, Anaconda, Anaconda, Montana. I like it. Cameron Bright. Oh, yeah, Cameron Bright is the name. That was from Montana. My bad on that. Trenton, Texas. How about that? Yeah, so you can see on some of these pictures, there's like a slight edit here or there. You know, a lot of people will try some of the long exposures. Sometimes it's not perfectly visible with the naked eye. But I think in this case, you know, it is actually visible uh, with the naked eye in a lot of cases. So if you're just joining us, if you've been a hermit all day or all night and you haven't been outside yet, we got a big Aurora event that's going on right now. And remember, the forecasting with this stuff is not always perfect. It really became apparent like an hour or two ago that this was going to be a really big deal, you know, at some point here on Tuesday evening. Here's another nice, uh, nice shot here, Lu Luciana Castro. This is in Richland Center, Wisconsin. And Wisconsin's a place that's got a pretty decent amount of cloud cover around right now. So there are going to be a few spots where the clouds will break up here and there. And you may get lucky. All right, let's bring in the expert, Steph Yardley, a space scientist. You're over uh, uh, across the pond there in London, England. And it's 2 a.m. where you're at. Thanks for staying up with us. I know somebody in your field is probably going to be up during an event like this no matter what. So what <laughs> led to this? I, you know, there, there seems to always be talk online of, hey, there's a big CME, a big coronal mass ejection. And everybody gets mm -hmm. all excited, and then it kind of falls flat. What's different about this one? So what's particularly different about this is there wasn't just one, there's going to be three CMEs that are going to hit us. Uh, so we're currently seeing the first one arriving now. And so this is, these kind of conditions are just going to continue. So you really are going to see this spectacular display that you hope for. Have you been able to see anything in, uh, in your neck of the woods or no? Just about. You actually just tore me away from it. So it's been very quiet here. And I've been seeing all the pictures online from the US and I've been extremely jealous. Oh, um, but God. literally just about 15 minutes um, before you called me on here, I could see starting to see the reds and the greens in my own eyes. So wow. it's probably good that you, you did keep me up because otherwise I might have gone to bed and given up. Uh, I mean, I think the one of the things that, that's been so interesting about this particular event is a lot of people are reporting that, you know, they'll go outside and they can barely see anything. And then literally just a couple minutes later, it's just totally spectacular. So you were talking about how there were multiple coronal mass ejections, which are what? They are basically explosions that happen on the sun that come out of the sunspots. Is, is that correct? That's correct. So we have these sunspots, which are really complex regions on the sun, and, and they like to release energy in the form of these eruptions. So these are bubbles of gas and magnetic field, and they hurtle towards us at several million miles an hour. And it's when they impact the Earth and interact with the Earth's own magnetic field and the atmosphere that we get these beautiful displays. So one term that I've seen that's been going around a little bit online uh, tonight is uh, a cannibal CME. And, and let me know, and I want to say thank you to, uh, to Sam Thomas, who made this little graphic for me. I said, I just need an earth and a sun that I can draw on during this interview here tonight <laughs> because we don't have like pre-prepared <laughs> graphics for this stuff. But uh, as I understand it, so let's say, you know, you have one coronal mass ejection that comes out and then there's another one after that but the second one is a little faster and then it basically like joins forces with the first one and becomes a big one is that the cannibal cme pretty much you you get a pancake effect so they all start to pile up behind one of it one of one of, ugh, I can't speak, sorry, it's like <laughs> 2 a.m. here. But they all pile up behind each other, and so you get this compound effect. So while the display is good now, we're hoping that when the second and the third arrive, um, you'll see even more, well, I don't even know whether it's possible to see some more spectacular displays than we're seeing at the moment. Well, you know, but, I, I thought everybody was saying that, like, it, it appeared that this, like, maybe the latter... Uh, CME that happened was going to be the bigger one and this is like the first one and you know from what I had heard and again I'm totally not an expert with this but um, I, I thought that tomorrow night was going to be like the big night is there still a chance that tomorrow night could be an even bigger night than tonight yes so that's what we're forecasting but as you said before these things aren't perfect so you have to be fair with us but because we're going to have multiple eruptions arrive and the other ones are going to be look more extreme than this one, then it's looking good. 
let's just say. So I think the third one is predicted to arrive sometime in the day tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, we're, just, today. we're just going here <laughs> off of this, uh, this solar storm forecast. And yeah, you can see the forecast here was for something to happen mm. tonight. That's probably what we're in right now. And then actually the forecast for tomorrow night. And again, keeping in mind, like you said, the forecasting with this is not always perfect. It's kind of like mm -hmm. forecasting tsunamis. We're still in the infancy of, you know, overall with uh, with making perfect forecasts for this. But it is forecast to be higher. So one thing I also wanted to ask you about is all these numbers. And gosh, look at all these pictures that are coming in. Thank you guys so much. The QR code on your screen. Anybody watching, keep sending us pictures. This is phenomenal. Don't even think about AI either. We have anti-AI filters. We can figure it out immediately as soon as they come in. Um, but uh, so the numbers. So we've got the G scale, right? It goes from G1 to G5, G5 being the most extreme. I also see this number here pretty frequently. The uh, Sorry, I meant to go back here. The KP index. So as I understand it, like a G4 storm would be usually like a KP index around seven. Like what do those numbers all exactly mean? Yes, yeah, so there are different indexes or parameters that we use to, to try and categorize the storms. Uh, I guess we do this with hurricanes, right? So at the moment, we've hit a G4. So this is a, a severe geomagnetic storm. That's what that means. And so, as you said, it's got, the scale goes up to five. Um, so we've reached G4, a severe storm. We could reach uh, G5, which is extreme. And this is what we saw, say, during the May 2024. And the KP index is, is quite similar. Uh, it's just different numbers. We're, we're talking about the disturbances in the Earth's magnetic field caused by these eruptions arriving. So the maximum for that is a KP9. Okay, so you've got the KP index. That's like the intensity of the coronal mass ejection that's coming out or, you know, some derivative of that. And you know, I guess the question I'm trying to ask is I feel like sometimes we have a high, K, or a high KP number or a high G number and it doesn't always translate perfectly to like great aurora viewing. Does, is there something to do with like the angle of attack? Does it have to be at just the right angle? Let's talk about like the angle of attack versus the KP index. I think it's just, it's, it's really difficult. So for example, earlier tonight, I, I couldn't see anything and it could be due to many factors. It could be due to where the, uh, the auroral oval is sitting. It might be pushed uh, further south. It might, it might just be due to light pollution. There are so many variables in this. And, and like you were saying earlier, you can sometimes see patches of the aurora in activity or the whole sky can be green. So it really does change quite dynamically on small time scales and spatial scales. And so it's, again, that makes it really difficult to predict and then not everyone's going to have the same experience yeah i mean you know when you look at the um the cloud cover right now i think this is like the most important thing to look at and again i'm going to shout out shane brown our meteor meteorologist behind the scenes for putting this together i don't think you're seeing this in too many other places this real color satellite uh, where you get a really good idea and just so people know here this is not an actual camera that's looking down at the Earth's surface, showing us all the city lights here. That's actually just kind of like a, <laughs> that's just giving you an idea of where exactly the cities are. Um, but the cloud cover on this is, is really fairly accurate here. It does a good job of mimicking what the visible satellite would look like even after the, the sun is down. So the most cloud cover right now, unfortunately, is around parts of the Great Lakes and the Northeast. Um, I'm, I'm looking at these little, these little breaks in the clouds over in Pennsylvania. I live in central New Jersey. Never seen the Aurora before, even though I grew up in Wisconsin. And I'm really, really excited to see what it looks like on my drive home tonight. But man, some of the most spectacular pictures that we've seen coming in out of the Dakotas, you know, Minnesota, Iowa, Nebraska. Yeah, this is North Dakota right now. This has been a great one to watch, Steph. Um, just, you know, we started off with the, the greens. We got some reds mixed in. I haven't seen too many purples yet. Maybe uh, explain to us what all the colors mean. So it just depends upon which elements in the atmosphere are interacting with basically what's hitting the Earth. So we have the oxygens and the nitrogens, and then these cause the different colours. So um, depending on what you're interacting with, so you get the greens or you get the reds, and then you'll also get them at, at different heights as well. Um, so you'll see the green in the pictures there uh, lower down 
and then you see the reds higher up in the atmosphere. Yes. So it's all to do with these interactions that are occurring in the atmosphere and, and what particles are actually uh, involved. And so the more energetic auroras, you're going to see not just the green, you're going to see the reds, and then you may see the purples and the blues as well. Oh, that's so cool. I love how you can see all three of the colors in Seattle. There's a great new picture we just got in from West Greenwich, Rhode Island. Thanks a lot, uh, Natarsha. I hope I said your name right. I'm really sorry. But, uh, wow, absolutely spectacular. Here's Crown Point in Indiana, where you can see some of the greens and the reds there. And if you're looking at the QR code on your screen wondering what that is, um, that's where you can actually just scan it and then send us any pictures and videos, and we'll highlight them. I mean, we've been showing, gosh, I don't know, 10 to 15 pictures that we've had sent in so far from viewers tonight. Fantastic. Um, hey, Chris, let's go out to the, or actually, North Aurora, Illinois, another fantastic picture there. Um, real quick, let's go out to this uh, graphic here because I want to show people the cloud forecast for tomorrow night. We're running a little bit short on time here, Steph, so hang tight. In about one minute, we'll let you go outside and uh, see what you've been dying to see <laughs> here. And maybe it's going to be way more spectacular when you go outside than when you came in. But this is the forecast I for tomorrow night, which could be as good as tonight. A little bit of a difference here. We're going to clear out in parts of the Great Lakes. Uh, there may be a little more cloud cover around parts of you know the Central Plains, but you know, overall, there is a system that's kind of pulling away. So let's take this even just a little bit further. We're not going to have as good of viewing conditions in the Rockies or the Northwest, but uh, maybe getting a little bit more lucky in parts of the Northeast. Overall, tomorrow night, I think a little bit less cloud cover than tonight. But get outside and check it out if you haven't seen it. Um, just a fantastic interview. We'll have to have you back again. Um, I was really excited for this all day because you put out such great stuff on Twitter or X, whatever they call it nowadays. Uh, <laughs> Steph Yardley, space scientist. From London, England. It's very late. Let us know how it is. Tweet at me. Let, let me know how the how, how the Aurora looks out there. I'll keep you posted. Thanks a lot for the time again. All right, guys. Thank it's you. It's Aurora Fest here on Fox Weather at Night. I just coined that name. Can anybody here come up with a better name for it? Maybe we can uh, make this uh, a little segment. The Aurora Blitz. Oh, you're taking after the the Buffalo Snow Blitz of 2014. <laughs> All right, guys. Stick with us. Hit that QR code to send us your pictures. We'll be right back.